Manus flat on the canvas. We are ready to rock and roll. Second round of action. There is a cut on Manus. Yeah. It's just <laughs> yeah, Jesus. Jesus. Martial Jack. Like my man B-Hop got knocked out, dropped out the ring last night. <laughs> 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 I need a little judo baby. I need me a little judo baby. And uh, let's, let's do it, Ron. Let's give me a You see what they me next? You got face for me, too. I got face for me. That's nice. Martial Arts. Chat. Martial Arts. Chat. Hello, my name's Chris Allen, and this is the Martial Arts martial Chat arts. Podcast. Chat. Today, I'm honoured to be joined by one of the UK's top up-and-coming stars in Fabian the Assassin. Martial Edwards. Arts Fabian, Chat. how you doing, my friend? I'm doing well, I'm doing well. You know, just came back to lovely England from, from a little holiday. Where'd you go, well, man? Um, I went to our Mallorca, went, went away with my little boy and my friend, you know, just took the family away and stuff. Well, it's about time you got away, to be fair, isn't it? Because you've, you've had, what, four fights in three months or something like that, isn't it? Or three fights in four months, whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, I've had three fights in, like, five months or something like that. So it's been a busy a busy start of the year for me, which is how I like it, so I can't complain too much. No, that's it. So, you're, so when you're out there just, just chilling, and what were you feeling like out there? Were you feeling, oh, I'm trying to relax for a week, or is it, do you know what, this is doing my head and I need to go back and train? Yeah, after the first few days, I enjoyed it. But after that, I was like, I was looking online and I was seeing all my teammates training and I thought, I just need to get back to training. You know what I mean? I just need to get back to, to improving myself. Well, as I said, you've always been a very active fighter, you know, you're not someone to chill out for that long. You know, like as you said, have you seen in your last few fights? But um, what happened before? You had a bit of a um, you had a bit of a break, didn't you? Which is very unlike you. It was about nine or ten months out. What was all that due to, if you mind me asking? Yeah, I broke I broke my hand. I broke my hand in... um. Uh, 2018, I think. Yeah, 2018. I broke my hand and had to have, had to have surgery. Um, do all the rehab and just came back properly. You know, I made sure I made sure I didn't rush it because I did I, I didn't want it to be a real real a real curing, um situation. So I made sure I did all the correct physio and rehab work and everything, and my hand back to 100% now. Well, not, and um, and and in your come when you're coming back in your comeback fight, you know you you move to Bellator. So how how did that come around? Did you get a call from the Bellator? I know you fought in Bellator before, but did you get a yeah. call from the Bellator lot while you're off saying like I know you're with Bama, but do you want to come and join us in the Bellator Newcastle card? Yeah, that was it. Um, I was I was, I was like one of the first guys that they offered. You know yeah. when they done the whole European signing. Um, I was like one of the first guys that offered, and they offered me like I think it was me and one more person. I got the biggest contract, so, but I was like, ah, oh, I don't know, I don't, I don't know yet, I don't know. Cause obviously the aim, the aim was the UFC, and that is, that is still something that I, I, I like to um, do as well. So, I thought, you know what? I spoke to my brother, I spoke to my team around me, and they said it was a great offer, and I thought, why not go over there and, and clean up and do some good work over there? That's it, mate. Because your brother went straight from Bama to Bel- um, to UFC, didn't he? Hello. 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 Yeah, hello, mate. You, I said, yeah. your bro- didn't your brother go from Bama to UFC directly? Yeah, he did. He did. He did. So he wanted me to follow the the, the same route as him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you know, like Bellator came, they offered good money, and I'm only young. I, I was only young in my career. I was only five and zero at the time, so it, it was a great opportunity for myself. Well, yeah, and you were coming in fighting one of their best, you know, Lee Chadwick, probably one of the most experienced guys you've ever fought. Would you agree? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You know, he's a former KDW champion. Um, kept coming into coming into that bout. So I fought him with that. He was like 38 fights or something like that underneath his belt. Yeah, the majority of those coming come by wins. So it wasn't like he he was a can. It wasn't like he's a bomb. You know, he had a lot of, a lot of wins underneath his belt. And um, I, yeah, I felt like I felt like it was a great matchup for myself. Yeah, like, did you learn a lot as well? Because it was your first unanimous, it was your first decision win. You know, it was the first time you saw a third round since you've been a pro. You know what yeah. I mean? So obviously that's something to be proud of itself. How, how did it feel? You know, entering those later rounds as a pro, did you feel comfortable after a layoff, or did, would you think it was due to the layoff? You know, it took that long. Um, I felt like the layoff. I felt fine. Like my cardio and everything was fine. That wasn't a problem. You know, yeah. um, I got great coaches down. You know, velocity. Strength and conditioning. They they train with um Andy Josh and everyone like that. So the cardio wasn't a problem. It was um I just felt I didn't feel myself because I wasn't used to not fighting every other month. 
Yeah. So having nine months off and then coming back in, and when I came back in, obviously I, I, was, on, I was on a big, a bigger show and it, it was all eyes on me and you know. So I felt like that had a bit to play in. I, I felt like I felt like that, that had a, um, a part to play in the reason why I was probably a bit um, hesitant with throwing certain shots. I wasn't letting it all go. Well, then after that, you got the big shout up. Literally three months later, you must have been, um, you know, it's an over the moon to hear that the Bella Tour were coming to Birmingham, and you're going to get the opportunity to fight on that card. Like, how does that feel? You know, you're going to be in your hometown near where you train. Is it UTC? I think you train that, isn't it? Yeah, and, uh, yeah. I used to tra- used to train at UTC. Renegade now. Renegade, sorry, yeah, because UTC, yeah. Is not, yeah, Renegade, isn't it? Yeah. And um, so you got Falcon, you got Falconetto uh, in your hometown. How did it feel? First of all, you know, I know everyone's asked you it a million times, mate. But you know, you, you in your hometown, you must have had more support there than ever. Yeah, it, it was like I, I still, to this day, to this day, I still watch back. I still watch back the um the walkout video and, and everything. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and it's crazy. It's crazy for me because. The um the main event and every everyone else on the car didn't get the didn't get the 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 reception that I got. You know, I felt like I got the biggest reception. So Hello? Hello mate, I'm here, yep. Yeah. Oh yeah, I felt like I felt like I got like, the biggest um reception and and walking out um being six I was six and all the time. Yeah. And getting the biggest reception in my hometown and, and getting the finish that I got. It was just so real, you know, like it's still it's still um it's, that is the most memorable part of my career so far. I probably I'll keep that until they come back to Birmingham again. Was it nice as well because you were fighting on the car with a number of teammates as well who trained with you, such as like Yannick Bahati. You see him um, come through with win as well. What was it also like as well as having all your friends and family there? You're actually to train with the majority of your teammates. So you're probably cornering each other between all your fights. Yeah, it was good. You know, like obviously seeing, seeing the guys um going there and, and get the win. I'm around these guys day in day out, so I'm seeing the, all the hard work that they do. So seeing seeing them guys going there performing, it, it, it was a great feeling in the gym. You know, um, I think after four after four fighters, only one loss. So we had we had like a good good success rate for um on on very really good success rate for Birmingham. So it was a great feeling in the gym. And uh, you got great. You got. I said you train with a lot of great people. I've spoken to a couple as well. I actually bumped into you at Cage Warriors. Um, a couple of weeks ago, Cage um, Night of Champions. Um, just to explain to people here, like, because you have a lot of teammates that also fight in Cage Warriors. Just explain, like, who you were cornering that night. I was cornering everyone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, if it wasn't like cornering. Um, I was there. I was cornering um the lightweight champion Jai Herbert. Yeah. Um, Natty, Fires, e, Frederick. Yeah. He's the uncrowned. He's the uncrowned champ. You know. I was oh. going to ask him. I was. I was going to ask you about that because um, I spoke to Natias on the podcast as well, um, literally a few days ago, and it was interesting to hear his comments. So, what, what what do you think about the whole situation and how it all unraveled? I, I just felt like the, the point deduction was unfair. Especially, I think it was two points or one point. But as one, yeah. You know, taking the point away, that was very unfair, and I felt like the ref. I just felt like the ref wasn't on our side that night. The ref wasn't on our side. Um, that James James Webb was stalling, you know. There's nothing wrong with taking someone down, but when they take someone down, they have to do work. And I felt like in the fifth round and a few a few parts in the fight, he was just holding on. He wasn't trying to get a submission. He wasn't trying to grind a pound. He wasn't trying to hold. And the ref wasn't warning him to stand up or anything. So I just felt like the ref wasn't on our side. Took, took the um, point away and, and cost and cost the world title, you know. Um, now he's the champion in our eyes. You know, um, that rematch needs to happen and and I believe now will finish him when the rematch does happen. Well, yeah, and, um, he was, and as I said, without the point deduction, without the point deduction, as we all know, he would have been the new champion now of Cage Warriors, and potentially looking at other other journeys, you know, opening up other doors like UFC and things like that might have come his way, you know. So That's I'm sure. Me. Yeah, man. Sorry, carry on. Oh, so now I'm just going to. I'm just agreeing. I'm just agreeing. Yeah, so you know, because as you know, with Cage Warriors, um, they've got close ties with UFC. You know, showing everything on UFC Fight Pass, and a lot of their guys are going over there. So when I spoke to him in the post-fight interview, like I am neutral on this, like with him and James Webb, I spoke to both of them, and they both had yeah. similar. They both had similar things to say about the fight. So it's interesting to hear what you're thinking about it, and it is interesting when you do look back at the fight, 
and um, he is being held quite a lot and a lot of control. But do you think um, Natias, you know, he sort of really let his frustration got to him a bit too much, which sort of made yeah. him push Goddard yeah. against him. Yeah, he did. He did. I think um, it, it just sometimes you have to play the game. You know, what I mean, you have to yes, ref and blah blah blah, and, and and play the game. So because they didn't play the game, I felt I felt like Mark Goddard was kind of like oh, fuck it then sort of thing. And um, in positions that he should have been stood up, he kind of just let it right, kind of let him ride it out. Um, so uh, I, yeah, yeah, he should, he should have kept his composure a bit more. Yeah, but you know, you can understand why he's frustrated. He's he's thinking I didn't even get a warning for dropping this guy on his head before, and then you're taking a point straight off me. You know, things like that. So I get where it's coming from. But he's, look, people now, I said, so I said to him, people didn't know who you were. They do now, you know, and um, you're on the biggest cards ever. The Cage Warriors have done, and I said you've got a great team behind you with the Renegade guys. So no, yeah. again, so really, it was a good night for the Renegade at Cage Warriors. Yeah, it, it, it was a good night. It was a good night. It, obviously, it's a shame that we didn't go back to the gym. With, with two world titles, you know what I mean? Um, but it, it was a great night, you know, Dry, dry put on a, a great performance. and Oh, fantastic. UFC, yeah. Fantastic performance, man, you know, I'm so proud of, so proud of him. So, it's like, the UFC just needs to come and get him, you know. So everyone, needs to, everyone needs to be tagging him and tagging the UFC and, and do it as much as they can because I believe I believe he's, he's world-class level, you know, I train with him. Um, I train with him and I do, I do believe he's on, that, he's on that level and he can go in the UFC and make some good noise. Yeah, do you, do you feel like now as well, like I completely agree with you, and do, do you feel now like there's not a huge, apart from like your brother and a few other names, there's not a, lot, lots of huge names in the UFC coming out of the UK. You know, um, a lot of them are retiring now, like Manu has just retired, you know, Bisping, people like that. Hardy's still knocking about a little bit. Do you feel like with the people, especially people you're training with and seeing how well they're doing, do you think the Americans are going to be seeing a UK invasion soon, you know, with some quality fighters, including yourself? I really do, I really do. That's why, that's why Dana White needs that's why Dana White needs to look at the UK a bit more because from our gym alone, from our gym alone, there's there's, there's some good talent. So I feel like in the, in the up and coming years, you will see a UK invasion in in Bellator and in the US as well. No, that's it, and, that, and that's what I've been screaming out for for a long time. And I said, especially with your brother taking on RDA soon, it's another opportunity for someone to get further in the UFC and yourself as well, mate. You know, you're not far away from it at all. But you got to think now, Bellator is pretty much if not on the same level of UFC now in a way so how does that feel being part of Bellator you know winning a title in Bellator must feel just as good as the UFC title don't you think oh uh, yeah it's, it's, it's a huge promotion um, I find it weird that people try to downplay the promotion you know um, it's just popularity wise you know um, UFC has been around a lot longer but my aim my aim is to collect that Bellator middleweight world title and to collect that UFC middleweight world title, you know, and and it's nothing to do with it's nothing to do. With I don't like any conflict. It's just to do with my goals, you know. What I mean, um, when I signed, why were promotion I signed for? The, the the goal was to be the greatest, yeah. you know. What I mean, the goal was to collect world titles. The goal wasn't to go in there and just like be average. So I'm gonna collect that middleweight world title in Bellator, defend it a few times, then I go over to the UFC and I look to gain that world title from there as well and, 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 and leave a good legacy. Well, you're definitely making a lot of noise. You know, you're, what, you finished, what, is it six out of eight in your pro career? And yeah. your amateur career, all of them, pretty much. <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And um, I just want to go, quickly go back to what you said you like to stay active. Um, just want everyone to know, in your amateur career, you did actually fight seven times in one year. Everyone needs to know that as well. Because um, that no, must... No. That... It was seven times in nine months. Was it, nine, was, it, was, was it nine? There, oh, sorry, I'm counting now. Yeah, you're right. Nine months. <laughs> they weren't in the 40s. They weren't in the 40s. Yeah, you know what I mean? So, um, oh, that's crazy. I'm, I'm active. I'm active. Guy. The aim for me was, I was trying to get five fights in this year. Uh, and, um, but I don't think it's going to happen. I think it's only going to be four, which is still a, a, four fights in a year is a decent amount of time. You know, um, uh, that that would be my that would be my um my record up to nine professional fights and that's that's a good that's a good level you know and and next year I want to be I want to be chopping off and ticking off everyone's name that's gonna get me closer to that world title shot. How many how many more fights do you think it's gonna take? Because a lot of people would think from your performances and the way you're finishing in devastating fashion um, that you're ready to go for a title shot now. Do, do you, how many fights do you think you want to have before that shot? Because I'm sure you'll take the shot if they offer it to you. 
Yeah, if the shot was offered to me, like, honest to God, if the shot was offered to me, I'd take that shot and I'd go in there and I'd do what I've been doing to everyone else, like, to Levanto, you know. I, he's, yes, he's got jiu-jitsu and all of that stuff there, but I keep saying, I keep saying to everyone, I just feel like my fight IQ is just better than all these guys. You know what I mean? These guys might be strong and they might be this or that, and I just feel like I'm mixing it up the best. So, I don't know how far, I don't know how far, because I keep, I, I keep saying to them, so give me these, I keep saying to them, give me guys a bigger record, give me guys that's, that's, that's this and that, and give me Mike Shipman, and give me Van Steenis, or whatever his name is. I'm, I keep saying to them, give me these guys, and they, they've got their own, you know what I mean? They've got their own path for me, they've got their own, their own plans for me, so, yeah. I, I, I don't know, I don't, I don't really know how many fights, but, 100% next year, whether it's the, end, the middle or end of next year, I'll be challenging for that world title shot, because that's what I'm pushing for. No, 100%, you 100% deserve it as well, Fabian, um, you know, and a lot of people agree with me and you as well. So, go, you were just mentioning Shipman there, I'm not going to go into it because you spoke about it a million times, but um, on that card, obviously Shipman didn't win that night. Were you looking at, so were you looking more at the winner of Masasi versus Lovato, or were you looking at the winner of Shipman versus Van Steenis? Which which one were you looking at more? I was looking at the winner of Van Steenis and Shipman because that was obviously a fight that was more likely, Bellator was more likely makes it, you know, so... um. I was looking at that fight, and I was just like, I wanted Shipman to win for the simple fact that would make a bigger fight for me and him. From the Bama days, yeah. You know what I mean? From the Bama days and the feud, and I mean, he was going to have a fucking scrap in the hotel. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? He, he was going to have a scrap in the hotel. They're lucky that we both were fighting the day after, so we have to keep it under wraps. But there's, there's a feud, you know what I mean? There's, there's a personal, he's turned personal now, you know, so that's a fight that needs to happen, and. I was hoping for him to win so we could set up a main event fight in Birmingham or, or somewhere in the UK, but obviously he got smoked. And is that, I want Van Steenis next, you know, he's trying to say that I'm not on his level, but I just feel like a, I feel that like scared talk. I think he's just saying that because he's scared and he feels like he's probably close to the title, title shot and he doesn't want to lose it fighting me. Well, yeah, you're, exactly. People might want people obviously look like sometimes they dodge you. They don't want to take on that fight with you because, as I said, you know how to do a, a technical fight to win. You know, like we saw in your last fight, you're very technical. You know, it's not the usual Fabian we've you see in the cage, but you've obviously adapted your game to win how you needed to win. You know, and then they did. And um, we saw John John Jones do it last weekend against Thiago Santos. He knew he couldn't go in there swinging. Yeah. Yeah, so you, you know you couldn't go in there swinging. You don't want to get knocked out like um, this Jonathan Basuka guy. He was a bit of a last-minute one for you, wasn't he? Replacement. Yeah, it was a bit, yeah, it was the last um, like, fight. I took the fight and like obviously a few weeks ago, it's a while because I fought in Birmingham, and it's like it's like the John Jones fight and stuff like that. I was watching Jones. And I'm like, if I fought the fight much different than than I was fighting, you know what I mean? It's like those sort of guys. You have to play the smart game. You have to pick them apart. You can't go in there and start exchanging because if you stay in the pocket and start exchanging, it just becomes a 50-50 fight. You know what I mean? I, I, my fight IQ won't allow me to do stuff like that. So I was watching, I was watching it back, and I wanted to interview us. Um, one of the journalists that, that asked me a question. I was like, ah, oh, I think it was Mike, and I was like, ah, oh, we didn't see the assassin tonight, blah, blah, blah. And I felt like... Because I, was, because I was tired, I wasn't even I, I wasn't even hearing what he was actually saying to me. If sure. I had a fresh if I had a fresher mind, I would have told him to fuck off, man. Because <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what I mean? If, if my mind was a bit fresher, I would have said, Mike, you need to fuck off because I go in there, I, I take this man apart, I don't get touched, and no, you're not happy with that. You know what I mean? You're not happy with me being a technical fight. You, you want me to stay in front of him and start having a tear up like how fucking Melvin yeah. and Kent did. Because you don't know so who this guy's last minute. He could have anything in his arsenal. You probably didn't have any time to, you know what I mean, any time to prepare for him, really, did you? It was a short amount of time, you know, like, I just, like, I just had to go out there and just fight how I was fighting, you know what I mean? Um, obviously, I had a few weeks to prepare for him and stuff like that, and um, we watched him, and we thought, we thought he would have thrown more, even though he's coming forward, but he couldn't get his, re he, he couldn't get his timing down on me because, obviously, my movement was too good and my distance control, so, it, it, it wasn't. We thought it would have came forward and stole more punches, and that way I would have been able to like step up and counter. But he was walking forward, where he wasn't throwing a lot, so I couldn't counter it that much. So no. I had to, I had to adjust to the, to the, to the game plan a little bit, and 
and I just go out there and just pick him up. I just pick him up in a smart, smart way. Did it surprise you actually how good he was when he came in? Like no disrespect to him at all, but did he? Did you think you know? I know you don't never you never look past your opponent, but did you? Were you surprised that he was able to take you all three rounds? Um, was the game? Were you training for three rounds, for example? I'm always training for. I'm always training for the hardest fight yeah. ever. You know, like it doesn't matter name or record or whatever. You know, if you go in there underprepared. You can you can get surprised and get yourself you know what I mean you can get yourself knocked out so um I went to, I went in there fully prepared. I went in there ready for a tear up. Obviously I know I know that he, he wouldn't offer me that but I went in there ready and my gas tank was ready for everything. My mentally men, mentally I was ready for anything. Um I thought honest to God, honest to God, I thought it would be a, I thought it, I thought it would have been a first round finish, you know, um but I just felt I felt a bit shitty on that night. It's it weird. I, my body felt tired. I felt a bit weird. I felt... I didn't feel how it felt in Birmingham. I didn't feel how I felt in other fights, you know? Whatever yeah. reason that was. Um, I could have strung... I could have strung, I I strung a few more shots together a bit more, which would have took him out. But it, it's all a learning curve for me, you know? I think, like, I think everyone forgets, and I forget myself. I've only been in this sport for, what, four years now? Four and a half years? Coming up yeah. to five? So, I'm still... I'm still learning a lot of things, you know what I mean? Like, yes, I consider myself as one of the best, but there's still, like, there's still, like, another 70% that needs to be dis- discovered, you know what I mean? Like, so... Well, a lot of a lot of people yeah. say you. A lot of people say you. You, you know, you you um you learn from your mistakes. Well, you're doing the opposite. You're learning from your winning, which is obviously a better route to take. Yeah. <laughs> that's, uh, that's it, man. Like, everyone... You know, people think like I, I I lose in the gym. You know what I mean? Like people think I don't lose, but I lose in the gym. Even though I lose, even in the, even though in the gym is learning, but at the same time, if you look at it at a competition point of view, I lose in the gym. You know what I mean? Like, I'm 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 training with top guys. You know what I mean? My brother and Tom and Yannick, and I'm training with top guys. So it's not it's not easy route for me. In the fight, it might look easy, and I might not lose in the fight. You know what I mean? Like I haven't lost no fights, but. I've lost in the gym. I, I know I still like to be beaten up and be choked and whatever. So I I improve from all those all of those situations. You know what I mean? And and then I go in my fight. I watch my fight back and I think to myself, ah, uh, like, you, right? I think to myself, how could I beat myself? You know? And then I, I just try my best to tie up those holes and I come back and show like a different version of myself. So, well, from my point of view, and a lot of people in the media room as well, every fight we see you in, we just see you getting better and better, because um, we obviously understand it's not all about just the flying knees that we like to see from you and the up kicks, you know, things like that. Obviously, it's yeah. nice to see the highlight reels, but as you said, you need to win the way you need to win, and you've got to be sensible about it. Otherwise, you're going to get knocked out, and you're not going to be fighting for as long as you, you want to, you know. Um, so I want to quickly go back to that. You know, when I was actually at both, I was at both events. I was at Birmingham and um, at I was at Birmingham and. Uh, Newcastle, sorry, and I got a chance to speak to you at Birmingham, and um, and what you were right, you know, and it was it was very different. You were between sorry and London, sorry, it was very different the way you were in the post-fight press conference in the London opposed to your Birmingham one. So it's interesting when you said that to me, you know, um, in your Birmingham one you were proper buzzing, like you were still buzzing in your London one, but you could tell you weren't overly happy. You know, would you agree? Yeah, I wasn't, and, I, and, and to be honest, there, like I watched it back, and I, I thought to myself. Mate, next time, if I if I have a next technical fight like that and I pick someone apart, I need to act like I've just won the fucking championship because I've seen people win on split decision or whatever, and, and they're jumping around like they like they've smashed the guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and I'm standing I'm standing around with a sad face on, and I've not been touched over three rounds, and I've picked him apart. So, I felt like I felt like because my expectation was to go in there and finish him and. And obviously everyone got all the expectations of me. I felt like a bit like, ah, he didn't do as well as he should. But I watched, I watched the fight back a few times and I thought to myself, nah, that was, that was a clean performance. So from now on, it doesn't matter if it's a fucking decision. I'm going to be jumping on top of the cage and screaming. <laughs> That's it, man. John, you actually answered my very next question I was going to ask you is that do you feel pressure when you, know, when you go in the cage to finish your fights? And you should answer the question there for me, man. It's perfect. So... What I, what I want to know is, is um, go, let's go back in time a little bit here. So, 
I like to find out a lot about you, about you guys if people don't already know. So where did it all start for you, Fabian? So we all know you and your brother are MMA fighters. So what was it like in the in the Edwards house growing up? How did MMA come around in into your family? He came around to my family. Um, my brother first. First of all, um, he um he, he got kicked out of college. He got kicked out of college for fighting, and um the gym. And then the the same week he got kicked out of college. Same week, um, UTC at the time opened up, and yep. um, he's about he's about sixteen, and he, he he said to my mom like, "Mom, please let me, please let me go there," you know, and hassled and hassled my mom. My mom, my mom said, oh, "Okay, fuck it, like okay then, I'll bring you there." And, yeah, I mean, I'll bring you there and whatever. And it's been history ever since for him, you know. And and I, I, I wish I wish back then when I seen him joining, I thought. I wish back then I thought, you know what, let me go, let me go as well. But I was on a different path, you know. Um, I was getting, my brother was getting in trouble, but when it, once he found fighting, changed. I was still getting in trouble. So for the years and years, I was still getting in trouble. I was still just being a street kid and just, I just being up to no good, you know. Um, yeah, man. Just being up to no good. It's just, just the area I come from, you know. I mean, the area I come from, and the, the crowd all around. I was, I was just following the crowd and. And doing bullshit. So I never picked up the sport until until I was 22. You know, um, I didn't pick on I, I didn't pick up the sport until I was 22. So yeah, I, no one ever told me to join the sport. You know, yeah. it's, I just I was watching it. I was, watch, I was my brother's fighting. I was watching a bit more and more, and I and I thought to myself, I I'll give it a go. I'm gonna give it a go. And I stepped in the gym, and ever since. Yeah, I mean, I've never looked back. Did you go straight into MMA, or did you do a little bit of boxing beforehand, like a lot of us Brits do usually, or was it straight um, into MMA? Straight, straight into it. I just, just went to the gym and just straight MMA. Um, after six months, I had my, I had my first amateur fight, and, and and the rest is history. Ever since then, I've just I've just been obsessed with the sport. No, see, it's obviously you, you found it's, you found your calling, and it's nice to see you both doing it as well. Like when we see you in the UFC one day. We've had the Diaz brothers, you know what I mean? So we're going to see the Ed... I know you're probably a bit cliche, but we're going to have the Edwards brothers now, you know, causing havoc. Now, the world, the world, the world, that's, that's what my brother was like, kind of like... You know what I mean? He, he wanted me there because he wanted us both to be in the same promotion, but it will happen. We both, you know what I mean? In a few years' time, once I've achieved what I need to achieve, um, it will happen, you know. Um, we'll both be in the same promotion and we'll both be holding belts, you know what I mean? Like... The Diaz brothers, the good, the good, the good, but none of them have ever held, held belt, belts in the UFC. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, so for for us too, there's still history to, there's still a lot of history to be made. You know, as as as, as the brothers. So, um, yeah, I look forward to like achieving that one day with him. I know it'd be great, especially for us in the UK as well. You know, have like the two most famous brothers in the world. Like, at, well, you are. You know, people know who you both are. You know, yeah. every, everyone knows who you both are. And it's not just from your brother with yourself at all, Fabian. You know, you, everyone knows you're lighting up the Bellator world. You know, and people are just amazed. But as I just said, people who do follow Bellator more need to be telling people to be watching it a lot more, seeing people like yourself come through. So yeah. back to what, what we were talking about. You know, we're talking about you know going for titles in Bellator and things like that. I heard in a previous interview you had. I can't remember who it was with now. But, you know, everyone's asking predictions on the fight and you pick Musasi like a lot of us did. So what, what what was your take on that fight, that middleweight title fight with Lovato and Musasi? I, 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 watched, I, watched, I watched a bit of the fight and, um, to be honest, it was fucking, I felt like it was a boring fight, man. Um, I felt like Musasi was, he felt flat. He didn't, he didn't seem, he didn't seem like he was fully switched on in a sense, you know, um, yeah, it's just like with people like Lovato, you need to play the distance game. You know, I mean, movements and distance. So I just felt like mentally and stuff, he just wasn't tuned in. You know, I mean, obviously, who who knows if you underestimate him? Because he was only he was only a nine and zero guy or whatever it was. So who knows if he was preparing, thinking this will be a walk in the park sort of thing? Um, you know, I mean, like really and truly, I haven't watched. I didn't watch all the fight. I wa- like I watched a few rounds and then. I kind of, I kind of, I kind of went, you know. Yeah, were well, you surprised as we were then, like Masasi? Because as we always thought the same, so we thought the outcome of the fight would be Masasi keeping his distance and you know picking him apart like he's done with multiple people. Like the guy left the UFC on a win streak for God's sake, you know. 
So it was. So I say. So do you reckon that opens up a bit of a fight, maybe for someone like Misasi for yourself? Because that'd be a very good test. It does. It does. It, it, that 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 moved around the um, that shift around the um, the little um, middleweight division a little bit. I know Misasi losing his belt, so it's um. I was looking at I was looking at the um the division, and I was seeing like I was seeing I was seeing all the guys that I would like to fight. And um, you know, I mean, I follow a little circle next to them. Misasi, Misasi was on the hit was one list. Of, he, was on, he was on the hit list as well. You know, what I mean, there's about ten of them on the hit list, man. So yeah, I got, I got about ten people on the hit list. So it's um, it's just like these people. I feel like they'll get me towards the title shot, and I feel like they'll um, I feel like they'll they'll show to the to the MMA world that what I'm saying is is true. You know, what I mean, the level that I say that I am is true. Because at the end of the day, talk is talk. But people only believe you yeah, when you go out there and you show them, like, mate, this is what I've been saying. I've been saying this for years. I'll take these guys out. People only believe you when they go out there and you do what you say you're going to do. That's, mate, and, that's, and you definitely, I say, you always put on a great performance, that's all to see. What also I'd like to think is, um, I know you want to move to the UFC when you can, but as we said, Bellator would be great to win titles there. Yeah, um, I know probably moving down the weight class for you is not the easiest thing in the world. So, so would, um, what about moving up? You know, being getting getting two titles in Bellator. Yeah, that's that's definitely that is definitely um that's I I I'll, I'll prefer moving up than down. You know, um, I'm I, I can easily get I can easily out camp and whatever get myself up to 100 kgs and stuff. So if I was, if I was preparing for a a light heavyweight fight. That that would be more suitable for me. So that's that's definitely an option. That's definitely an option. Um, get the get the middleweight strap and then head and try to get that. And hopefully challenge for the um like heavyweight title. Is there anyone actually in like the UFC you'd um like? I'm not I'm not saying we look at too far ahead here, but if you were to look at someone when you joined, is there someone particular you got your eye on there who you feel would put you to your, you know, a good test for you there? I feel I feel like a great fight would be me and Adesanya. And who, sorry? Adesanya, Israel. Okay, okay yeah. Oh, fair play, man. Good play to you. I'm not saying I'm sorry, you... So that's, that's what I'm... It, it, like, when I look at fights, I look at, like, I look at those guys, like, I look at, um, Yo, you know what I mean? Like, I look at Yo, and I look at, I look at, I look at all the top guys, and I, and I, I just see myself being in the mix, you know, like, yeah, when man. I step in, when I step in there, I feel like I'm going to be in the mix at, at those sort of people, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> I, I, feel like be, I, feel, I feel like I'll be in a mix of those those people, so that's what, that's what I'm aiming for. When I'm fighting these guys like Jonathan and, and Chadwick and Bradley Bland, whoever else, I'm not looking past them, but I, I'm kind of looking through them in a sense. You know, I'm I'm thinking I'm, I'm going to go through you. I'm going to go through you and show and show that you guys are just not like not on my level. You know what I mean? Like you guys can't cause me no problem. And just I, in the back of my mind. In the back of my mind, I know what I'm working towards. I know what the, I know what the, I, I know what the level I'm trying to get to. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to get to. I'm not trying to be on those guys' level. You know what I mean, if I go, if I go in there and I'm having, I'm having a tear up with Jonathan. That, you know what I mean? Jonathan's not on, on the level of you no know, top guys. That shows that I'm not on that level. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I, I have to go out there and put on clean performances to show that these people just. They're not on my level. I showed Chadwick was on my level. I showed fucking Neto, Jonathan. I'm gonna show. I'm gonna keep on showing that these guys are not on my level. No, and if and if anyone's going to argue with you saying like, well, why are you only taking these guys to a decision? Some of them, well, you can argue and say, well, some of the best world champions of all time, you take people to decision. Anderson Silva took a lot of people to decision. Um, George St Pierre, Matt Hughes, you know, people like that. You know, these old school legends, Randy Couture. Took, took people to decision, you know, but you know why? And John Jones now, because that's the way champions fight. Champions don't go in there swinging, they go in there and they fight the technical fight. They fight the clean technical fight. It's like the sport's got a bit mad in the sense of people want you to go out there and slug it. <laughs> so people want you to go out there and slug it out, and then when, when they start slugging out, it turns into a 50 50, then it's like it turns into let's see who lands the bigger punch first. You know what I mean, and and that, that requires no skills. 
Exactly. And, and also, just as you said, the 50-50, it doesn't matter who you are then. If, if, you, if you get hit, you get hit sort of thing. And Do you find it quite crazy when some fighters at the end of rounds, like they, they just say, let's just stand here and swing at each other? Do you think that's crazy or do you think it's good to put on the show? Okay, as a fan, as a spectator, I'm watching it, I'm thinking, fucking go on then. Like, <laughs> I wouldn't do it myself, you know, like, if I, like, it's an understanding, if, if you're a guy and you're losing the fight, of, of course you're going to say, let this swing, because you know, there's, there's hope that I'm knocking down, so, but if, if you're winning, what's the point, what is the point saying, let's swing it out, and then you get knocked out, you lose half your money, you, half your, you know what I mean, half your pace, and, and I and mean, no one cares. That's that's the thing. These fans, the majority of fans, they don't really care in a sense of they want you to put a performance on, and then you go out there, you risk it, you get, get yourself knocked out, and then they all make fucking memes off you anyway. So it's like, <laughs> you know what I mean, it's like fuck that. You have, you have to fight for yourself, but never, I never, I never let the crowd influence me on how I should perform it. You know. How was that the first time ever pre being booed in your career? It's first ridic- time ever. It's ridiculous. Um, I feel like it's going crazy. Like <laughs> I heard the booze. That the, honestly, that's the first time I've ever been booed. So I heard, I heard like booze, and my brother knows me. My brother knows me, so my brother was saying, "Fuck, like fuck them." <laughs> like, stay focused. My brother knows me. Like my brother knows that. I, like you know, what I mean, sometimes I, I, I can let my ego take over. So my brother was like, "Relax, man. Relax. Don't, don't, don't watch them." focus so it was good I had him in my corner to say like relax because I was ready to like turn the fire up on Jonathan you know so so it, so it's good but it's good to experience stuff like that because more than likely I might go to a, a I might go to a country and the, and the whole country might be behind that like, might be against me so it's good to experience stuff like that because it will happen in, in my career again you know what I mean more than likely I might fight you know what I mean it will happen so it's good I've experienced it and my next my next fight or whenever it happens again i won't let it affect me <clears throat> it's interesting you say about you know fighting on enemy territory and stuff um i hope you don't mind but there's a couple of the guys on our on our, on our round table and a few fans just had a question if you don't mind me asking if that's okay yeah that's fine. Um, yeah so, so a friend of ours called john basically he asked um a question i'd like to ask you he says would you like to break into the u.s market competing over there more often Yes, I yes I would. Um, my my P1 visa is currently being um processed, so it's it's it's, it's taking its time, but it's coming. So I will be breaking into the US market and going over there and building a fan base. But I will never leave the UK. You know what I mean? Like my home is the UK, my my family, my training, everything is the UK. So it doesn't matter where I go, it'll always be Birmingham and England. Ah, that's it, man. I know you feel, you know, a lot, a lot of people they feel like they can move to the US and they can get better training up there and things like that. But as you've made, as you've made clear with Team Renegade and all the people that fight down there, it's all here as well. Bring, you know what I mean? So yeah. Yeah, it's all yeah, it's all, it's all on our, on our, on our doorstep. You know, um, everyone has got this. Back in the day, it probably was like that back in the day, but not now. You know what I mean? Not now. You, you got a lot of good, good level people over here, so. You don't need to go anywhere. That's it. And um, another one, we got well, one more. It's, um, there's a few here, but I'll just ask you one more. From Kieran, um, yeah. he, he wanted to ask, were you pissed off that your full fight wasn't televised on Bellator London? I, I was. I was. But at the same time, I I understand because I came on the card late. You know, um, the main card slaps was already filled in and, 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 and all of that. So I, I, was, I was just grateful to have the opportunity. Which a lot, a lot of other fighters that fought on Birmingham card, they never, they asked to get put on the card, they never, they never got put on the card. So I was grateful to get put on the card late, a late fire, and half, I, I was shown on American TV or something like that. So it, you know, it, it wasn't bad, but in future, I, I believe Bellator will have me on all the main cards. Yeah. Like, that's what I was going to say. Is that what you're aiming for? Like, do you do you feel like you've been not looked past by better talks? They keep putting you on these big cards, but do you feel like you know you you're on the main card, but you actually want to be the main like the main fight, the main event? Yeah, I feel like I feel like I've been on the card, but and they don't want to see a little promotion. But I feel like like if they want me to be the star that I am, they need to like just push her just a bit more. You know what I mean? Um, just you know what I mean? If they want me to be the face in the UK, then they should just push a bit more. 
Would you feel they have sort of been pushing? Um, like you know, they are they're giving you a lot of fights. You know, like when, whenever you're ready. Like for example, you said you've had you've had three fights in very short succession. Um, but would would you say also? Um, would you what would have, did they ask you to fight again very soon, straight after your last fight? Seeing you know you're coming away unscathed and everything like that. It, it, to be honest, yeah, it's um it's not really so much as Bellator is asking me to fight. It's it's me asking them, you know. And okay. my main my main concern when signing the contract was I need to be fighting minimum four times a year. Otherwise, I'm not signing. You know, like that was like that was it. If I'm not fighting four times or more, then I rather I rather relax and start go with someone else. So they've they so far they've they've kept their their end of the deal. I mean they've kept it and um and they're fighting me as much as I want to fight. Are you head, do you fancy heading over to Dublin the later this year? Is that something that interests you? I've act I've act for the card I've act for the get part of the Dublin card and you won't get you won't get the main event though. That's the problem because Gallagher will obviously headline that one. Oh yeah, you know and and, and all of that. So I, I don't know my main event in, but it'll have to be on the main card. I'm just going to be on the, you know what I mean? Like, it'll have to be on the main card. It, I, I realize when I fight on the main card compared to when I fight um, on, like, the app or whatever, you don't get the same exposure, you know? Yeah. You don't get, get the same exposure as you, as you would get. So that's, that's, that's in talks, you know, I'm fingers crossed sort of thing, but I don't believe it will happen. I believe, I, I believe I'll have one more this year and it'll be in November. Well, as long as you get that one more, I know you'd like to fight a couple more times as well. But, you know, you need you need to take a break sometimes, you know. I know you don't want to, but yeah. that, that might have been why you weren't feeling yourself in your last fight. You may have just yeah, been mentally draining yourself, you know, even if you feel okay. Yeah, it could be. could be, you know. So, November for me, November is the perfect. And after that, I can relax, enjoy Christmas, and then go again for the new year. Well, yeah, hopefully in the new year you'll be looking at, said, tart shots and things like that. Personally, I'd love to, I'd love to see you take on Musasi in your next fight. Um, yeah. I think that'd be a great matchup for you. I think Van Steenis needs to fight someone else before he can fight someone like you. No disrespect yeah. to him at all. Um, but I think Musasi for you next, and then winning that Lovato next year. You know, so that that yeah. that that would be fantastic news, especially for yourself and all us lot in the UK as well. And I personally can't wait to hear if Bellator make that announcement. You know, because that would be absolutely fantastic. Um, I know. So how how would you how would you approach someone like Musasi? You know, like obviously you don't if you do obviously don't need to give away game plans if you did fight him. But how would you approach a fighter like him because he's not too far different from yourself? I feel like it's just I feel like I just move, I move better than these guys. You know, like my movement and my my my, my ability to do, to get in and out of range quick. Is, is my speciality, you know. What I mean, I, I'm, my ability to read. So, we must actually, obviously, I change. I change the, the attack will be changed. Like, you know what I mean, my striking coach and my, my grappling coach and everything. We look at different ways how to take apart his game. But I wouldn't really change my game that much, to be honest. You no, know, I'm not going to change my game for anyone else because I believe that my style beats everyone. So, I'm not going to change it. So, it'll be the same thing: distance control and. And pressure because I watched him fight and I feel like he's not a person that deals well with pressure from what I've seen when he fought in the UFC. So, so yeah, that's how I beat him. You know, like distance, distance, but pressure him. I mean, in and out of range. That's it. And and obviously my my coaches and stuff and, and myself, we hello we look we look at um like obviously what strikes and and what sort of game plan we would use to take him out but that'll be a great fight if they, if, if they announce yeah. that in November that'll be such a fucking massive fight I know and obviously I know I know they're looking at maybe doing a an Amsterdam card as well but that's not going to be till next year because I'm sure Masasi would love to headline that as well but you never know you can have a fight this November and fight Masasi later next year then the title fight later on in the year so that that could be a good little setup for you there as well yeah that could be a good that sounds like a good shot to be honest yeah, like, say you could fight someone in November, then Musasi in Amsterdam next year, then Lovato if he's still got the title. No disrespect to either Musasi or Lovato, but who to you would be the most pre- more preferred fight for you? Against which fighter? Preferred? Or, I don't want to say, um, I, I don't want to say the easiest fight, because it feels rude. <laughs> it's, um, I feel like, I feel like Lovato would be the easiest one, to be honest, you know, um, I just feel like, like obviously, he beats Musashi and all of that, but he was very much um, 
it, it was just like still one dimensional. He didn't, he didn't do, he didn't do much with his grappling. Um, I like to watch it. I like to watch him back. Obviously, he's done, he's done great things in his in his grappling career. And he's obviously, done great things in his MMA as well. But I feel like I feel like Masashi will give me a better fight. You know, it's an all round mm. better fight. You know, um, he'll come on a bit more switched on, and mm. yeah. it, it'll be a better fight. And he's bringing that UFC experience. So if you get in through people like him, you know you're going to be fine going through into the UFC which is another yeah. boost of you for your next step in your career. Um, no, it'd be fantastic. Um, so we have not too long left now, but I also ask you ask one question that's obviously buzzing around the MMA world. You obviously saw Ben Askren get knocked out by Masvidal the weekend. Yeah. What do you think about that? Fastest knockout in history. It's just like, uh, what are you doing? <laughs> I've, seen, uh, I've, seen it, I've seen him run at him. I thought he just ducked straight. He ducked straight into it. And I just looked like, what are you doing? Like, you know, I, I, I don't like, I don't like Master Dove, you know what I mean? I don't like him. Obviously. But, <laughs> yeah. but it's like, you know what I mean? I don't like him, man, but it's, it's just like, what are you doing, mate? Like, what are you doing? You know what I mean? I don't know. Ben Askim, I've never rated him. I've never rated him as a fire. You know what I mean? He came to the UFC talking talk, he's talking to talk, and, which is fair. Fair enough in that, but I've just I watched his previous fights. And I I've just never rated him. No, you know what I mean, it's, I feel like he was a shitter version of Khabib sort of thing. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> Khabib takes people down and, and he smashes people, takes him down and he fuck all. So I wasn't really like impressed anyways. I, I just thought it would go like that way, but it, it was a you know it was a good knockout. Yeah, man. Well, it, would, uh, it was actually about two seconds if the ref was over there quicker. To be honest with you, it was literally 57. The clock said as he was already out cold, so that's pretty nuts. And um, I, pers- I, I personally think that's going to be set up quite nicely for your brother versus RDA. Sorry to come back to that. Um, Masvidal, I know, wants the title shot, but I reckon the winner of your brother and RDA, especially with your brother, should be taking on Masvidal. What do you think next? And I feel like I feel like fuck, fuck, fuck Masvidal. You know what I mean? He's talking about top stuff. I feel like he took it to my tout shot, and I'm like, what are you on about, mate? Like, in the last four fights, he's 2 on 2. Like, I understand he's had two massive knockouts, but he's still 2 on 2 in the last four fights, and it, my brother, after he gets through RDA, he'll be on a seven fight winning streak. Yeah, man. That's yeah, serious. So, so, yeah, fair enough, that's a fight that we want to happen, the, the master that I've got, that's a personal reason. But at the same time, the bigger, the bigger goal is that world title. So, after RDA gets smoked, after he gets smoked next week, we won't, you know what I mean, we won't be screaming out for Master Dove, you know what I mean, we'll be really screaming out for World Title Shot, you know what I mean, he's, he's jumping on the mic talking about he did have a World Title Shot, he's like, mate, you're, on a, you're two and two, like, you f- Ben Askham is fucking, he's shit, you know what I mean, until he just fights with his chin up in the air, he, he wouldn't find a smart fight, so, hello, hello. Yeah, yeah, no, so, yes. yeah, so yeah, said, as you, and you're right, and your brother's on a bit of a tear, you're both exactly the same, you two, you're on 18 fight win streak, including your amateur career, you know what I mean, yeah. your brother's on that, so you definitely, as we were talking about earlier, the Edwards brothers are coming, Diaz brothers move aside, you know what I mean? Yeah, man, that's, that's it, the mate. thing, you know. <laughs> and I can't wait, I can't wait to see it, that's in the UK, mate, we can't, none of us can wait to see, we're watching your rise at the moment for Bellator, I'm watching your fights backstage, and obviously cage side in the press area, and... Again, I've got to say thank you for coming on the show, and always thank you for stopping and saying hello, like when I saw at Cage Warriors, and you know having a chat after the fights yeah. before, mate. You know, we really appreciate it. I said if, nah. I, had more, if I had more time, I'd I'd, I'd carry on, mate. You know. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Not me. We only get a certain amount of time. But um, but what I want to give you the opportunity, if you know, please, mate, is um, give a shout out to any of your sponsors. You know, you've been spoken a lot about teammates already, but obviously shout any of them out in your gyms and just people have helped you get to where you are now, mate. Yeah, um, I just like to give a shout out to. My uh, management company, um, yeah, that's B- BLVK and BT <laughs> and B. <laughs> sorry, yeah, I can hear it. Right. I'm, I'm B and BP Sport. Um, my sponsors and the master to fight gear. They've been moving for years now. So I just, I just give a shout out to my team. You know, um, Team Renegade, Core Fit, Priory Boxing, and, and everyone else that's involved. Yeah, everyone check out Team Renegade. They've got some beasts coming out of there. Um, it's a serious gym. It's the guy you've got champions from South Africa in there. You know, in the, uh, is, is it EFC? Of course, is it ECW? Yeah. EFW? What's it called now? Yeah, yeah, EFC, EFC. EFC. Sorry, mate. It was ECW. It's wrestling. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, like with Yannick and people. So you've got multiple champions there, and I'm sure you'll be one soon, mate. So um, 
again thank you very much for coming on you know i know you're a very busy man at the moment obviously with your brother next week are you going to be in america next week um nah i can't i can't go because i'm i'm doing my come do my p1 i couldn't go on my s dad uh, some complications but uh, yeah it, it's a nightmare <laughs> but I will. Yeah, you'll get a win. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure we will. So, yeah, um, and yeah, really look forward to talking to you again about any more upcoming fights, mate. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Anytime, mate. Thanks very much. Oh, cheers. Bye-bye.